Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and today we're going to uh, return to one of my um, most enjoyable subjects really and that's digital electronics. Now we've looked at um, latches on a number of occasions in previous videos. I recommend you look at the digital electronics playlist um, if you want to um, uh, see those uh, series of videos. I'll put a link up top to that. Um, and we've talked about how we can use latches uh, as memory, we've talked about how we can use them to count and today I want to look at a, another chip that contains uh, 16 latches and it's got a very uh, specialised application and it's uh, quite a common chip actually. So uh, that's the 74LS595 which is a shift register. So let's start by having a look exactly what a shift register is and how it works, bit of theory and then we'll go to the bench and uh, play electronics. The internal workings of a shift register then consists first of all of a, a register with eight latches which are connected together and a second data latch uh, where the uh, eight latches are not uh, linked together in a daisy chain and I'll come back to how we use those in a moment. So essentially we feed data in to the left hand side which goes into the first memory location and with each clock pulse the data is shifted uh, one space to the right Eventually, of course, the data will, if you like, overflow and there is also a data out uh, pin which we can make use of to, to daisy chain uh, two or more shift registers to allow us to uh, produce more than eight bits of uh, data. Now, there is internal connections between the shift register and the data latch, like so, and the data that's in the shift register can be transferred into the data latch by pulsing the latch pin I and that then uh, remains the data which is available on the outputs until we um, until we take the latch pin high again and the purpose for that being of course that uh, that allows us to display data whilst we're continuing to shift new data into the register and if we could see the data in the register constantly changing you obviously get um, spurious numbers and flickering possibly on displays. So that's the um, high level circuit. Uh, taken from the TI data sheet here is the 74LS595 which is the chip that I'm going to use today and you can hopefully see there uh, the left hand column of latches is actually the shift register and the um, right hand uh, column of latches is the data latch and the only additional bit on there is there are eight um, inverters which are buffering the output and there is a, a second line goes to those buffers which allows you to turn on or off the output using the um, the G uh, input and that would would allow you for instance to control the brightness of the display using say PWM uh, signal into there because it will turn on and off the output without affecting the, the contents of the data latch. So that's the theory. Um, let's go and uh, now have a look how it looks on the breadboard. Um, hopefully that's um, fairly self-explanatory. Um, so the 74LS595 is the uh, uh, chip as I've highlighted there. We've got on the left hand side the, the button for the clock pulses, to, to the right of that the button for the data pulses and over on the far right we've got the uh, latch button. Uh, now ignore the left hand chip there, that's just circuitry to allow me to produce a, a clean clock pulse and I'll talk about why that is when we actually get to the bench. So without further ado let's go and have a look at um, how this looks. Okay, here's the uh, breadboard then on the bench as uh, you've just seen on the slides. So we've got the uh, clock button, the data button and the latch button over here. And uh, the eight LEDs here are displaying the contents of, of the latch and there's the associated current limiting resistors here and we've just got one or two pull down resistors there for a couple of the uh, the pins that we're not making use of in this video and we've also got the IC there that's helping to produce uh, uh, a reasonably clean uh, clock output pulse. We'll talk about that problem in a moment. So pressing the latch button then moves the contents of the shift register into the latch and the LEDs display the status of the latch. Now it is powered up 
So the latch clearly contains all zeros. So let's um, make the input data uh, to one, like so, and press one o'clock pulse. And now let's latch that in, and we should have just the left LED lit. Yep, we have. So let's advance it by one more clock pulse. And you can hopefully see each time I pulse the clock, we're moving that one one pace to the right. Now at this point, the next time I press the clock button, uh, that LED goes out, but the pin which um, is the data out pin uh, will have now gone high, which would allow me to, if I wanted to, to connect a second shift register to the output, and we could display the um, state of the data lines for another eight bits of data and we could continue to daisy chain that for as far as uh, was required but again I'm not going to uh, go into too much detail there so if I now um, make the input to logic one put two and then I'm going to send two zeros hopefully and we should now have yep yeah, there we go so we've now got zero zero one one and I'm going to do it in um, just in four bits here because it's just just easy and um, doesn't I mean I end up doing countless uh, presses of the button but if for instance now I was to send four pulses one two three four that should have moved those those two uh, high bits there to the end two let's see if I've managed to do that yes I have um, so you can hopefully see that again and two clock pulses would shift them out completely so each advance of the clock moves one bit to the right staggering okay let's just um, have a think about uh, why that might be useful um, and hopefully one of the things you notice in straight away is I mean I'm just doing this manually um, but um, what I'm effectively doing here is I'm converting serial a set of bits that are being sent serially one after the other I'm converting them into uh, parallel data so we've got here if you like a, a serial to parallel conversion going on and in this case for 8 bits but it could be for 16 or um, 24 or 32 however many you want however many you might uh, you might want so that's the general action of the shift register and just for completeness sake I'm just going to now uh, just add uh, another another form of display to the board so I'll just do that and by the magic of filmmaking we've now added a, a second breadboard now I'm going to go into the details of this breadboard particularly uh, there is a, a previous video where I'm making use of the CD four five double one uh, display driver chip and I've got two of them here and here this one's uh, got a fault on one of the bits so but you'll still get the general idea so now what I've done I've taken um, the four bits of the first half of that byte into this segment and those four bits into that segment now unfortunately that end line isn't working on that chip which is a shame but there you go you can still nonetheless hopefully um, uh, make some sense of this so first of all let's um, let's put one bit in and latch it and you can see that's quite correctly showing the contents of those first four bytes as being equal to eight so that's one zero 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 which is eight in four bit binary and then if I um, start moving it across you can see the number decreasing to one there so we went uh, one two four eight and uh, another press should move it into the second chip yeah eight and we should now get four and two and we won't get anything next because unfortunately this last line isn't working um, but that's just another way of um, displaying what's going on in the shift register so if I now go one one zero zero into the first four we do indeed get three and if I now move that one two three four we get a totally erroneous result because that last bit isn't actually um, 
a light and so it doesn't uh, give us the correct uh, display number in that second digit but hopefully for the purposes of this explanation you can nonetheless see what's going on I don't have another 4511 handy to, to replace that with unfortunately it was actually working earlier but it's uh, as soon as I start to film it's decided to play up um, as we in say in English it's uh, sod's law um, so again I can move those two bits out completely and we've gone back to zero zero so no LEDs and at least you get a positive indication there that um, of the zero zero which you don't particularly with the LEDs it's a absence of light so um, let's try something along the lines of zero one one zero see what that puts into the first digit and that's correctly put a six so if we then go one two three four we should have moved it into the second part and indeed it is correctly uh, displaying a six so you get um, the general idea there of what's going on um, with the shift resistor and hopefully that's um, that's making some sense so I suppose the next thing is apart from lighting up a few LEDs and showing some numbers what can we actually do with this well um, a very common use of the um, 595 shift register is to use it with some kind of microcontroller whether it be a PIC or an Arduino or something because essentially what you can do by using three lines from your microcontroller so select so three outputs of your Arduino you can um, latch in to a shift register 8 bits or into two 16 bits and then move them into the latch and what you've effectively done there is you've taken control of um, 16 data lines with um, just three lines of input so you can expand the possibilities of what's available and obviously the logic state will remain latched on the output of the 595 until you press latch again um, so that's that's quite a, a handy way of using it now I'll put some links in the description and also above but but Ben Eater has made um, an Epron program pro programmer uh, from an Arduino uh, using a couple of shift registers to allow him to generate um, the data and also the address lines for, for an Epron uh, which I think is a, a really neat use of, of the device and I think finally why have I got this bit of circuit here um, which I've not really talked about well what I've got here is a hex Schmidt trigger hex inverter Schmidt trigger just using one of the gates actually and I'm having to do that because the 595 shift register according to the data sheet is able to work at up to 20 megahertz so um, sometimes I could press the button reliably and sometimes I just got a totally erroneous result because when I press that button down uh, momentarily before the button really does land sort of on the contacts it may well have uh, made a contact briefly and then remade it and although that's the, you know the blinking of an eye from a human perspective to a chip which is capable of reading data at up to 20 megahertz it reads it as maybe two or even three or more pulses so what I've had to do there is debounce that switch it doesn't matter for the data switch and it doesn't matter for the way the latch switch is working but it does matter um, for the clock and when I was first putting this circuit together I could press um, eight presses on that button and discover that um, actually the what the chip had seen was a great deal more um, presses so what I'm going to do is I'll make another video about um, how that debounce works and why it's um, required and hopefully that'll make some sense but just for now trust me that's all that's there for and uh, of course you have to take the clock pulse high um, for it to be a valid clock pulse um, and this is quite handy I could just use one gate on the um, Schmidt to trigger because it's an inverter so actually that button uh, takes the input of the inverter low which means that um, the output goes high so when I press that button it produces a, a positive going pulse on the far side of the um, that gate but I'll talk about that um, in another video so there we go that's um, 74 LS 595 shift register very handy way to convert serial into parallel data and in the case of microcontrollers quite a handy way to produce 
control of a, a lot of data lines um, from relatively few input lines. OK, well hopefully that's made a bit of sense. Um, it's a bit frustrating that one of my display driver chips has decided not to, to work properly. Um, uh, when I actually start to do some filming, um, it was working perfectly up to that point, but hey, I guess that's, that's life. Um, but you've hopefully got the, the general idea, and you've seen a, a shift register in use. And um, that's quite a common thing to see an Arduino attached to the um, input of a shift register which allows it to generate uh, lots of uh, different uh, logic lines for various projects. So it's a useful um, bit of kit, shall we say. I hope that's made some sense. I will um, follow up with a, a video on debouncing for you. In fact, um, I'm going to start stripping the breadboard down and then I will actually uh, uh, make a start on, um, on putting that video together. So I hope it's, um, this one's made some sense. If you're in the market for a multimeter, please have a look in the links in the description um, uh, to the ones from Kaiweets. If you do buy one from Kaiweets, use the code that's in the description. You'll get a discount. That also helps the channel. And I'd encourage you to check out my meter reviews if you're not sure. Um, I think they're excellent hobbyist meters. And um, I'm certainly uh, very pleased with the ones that I'm using. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.